the haptic void is, um, you know, the haptic void is perhaps my main musical concept. Um, and it, it really sort of is what grounds uh, general tremolo and special tremolo in the burst beat, um, which is to say that those are, uh, those are techniques, those are solutions, I guess you could say, that then are instantiated as uh, non-conceptual musical uh, techniques or styles uh, that then I use to make music and the haptic void um i mean it's it's a concept with a, a name it's kind of a, a nomination um but it is the haptic void is not a musical technique it is something that um uh you know i it comes from an experience that i have had that i think that that drives me to make music uh and um, in my uh, transcendental black metal text, there I uh, identify it as sort of like a north star for um, that's sort of guiding the history of metal. Um, so that it, it's not just me that feels the haptic void and is driven to create from it, but that. Um, the development of metal, especially extreme metal, um, uh, at the very least, we can put aside the question of other styles of music and world history, uh, um, is generated in the same way that sort of my own um, drive to create runs. Um, and uh, so what is the haptic void? Um, and I guess really this belongs in the, um, the section about, um, uh, the kind of religious cosmic dimension of music, which I was addressing last decade, um, because it is, you know, this is ultimately a theological category, um, though it's, uh, um, though it refers to something very concrete, um, which is, I mean, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. So like, like the, the haptic, uh, relates to feeling, right? Haptic means you're like your sense of touch basically. Um, and void is, uh, you know, something that is lacking, um, or, you know, and L Lacan likes to distinguish sharply between a lack and a void. Um, and I, I agree with him. I, I think this is a really useful idea that well, with a lack, there is something missing. Um, there's like a, like say, like a connect four grid and one of the squares in the grid is empty. And so you can, that, uh, that makes desire possible on a certain level, but it's a more superficial one because um, you can move things around to try and fill it. Um, uh, but it just stays there. Um, a, a void is like a space. It's more of a topological concept. It's like a space that has a hole that is built in to the space. Um, so it's not just in the space, it's built into the space, sort of like um, uh, like the hole in like the handle of a mug or something. So like a mug, it has a hole in it, that no matter how much you deform or stretch the mug, uh, that hole is kind of just like a, it's like a mark, uh, it's like a mark that, that ends up being a kind of a starting point, like a little like itch or something, I guess, um, where you might at first experience it as an affliction, 
uh, as something wrong or missing, but then you realize it's actually not something missing. Um, it's a mark of distinction. It's a. Uh, it's actually a, a a presence. It's a starting point. It's a springboard. Um, and so the haptic void, um, and you know, and in in the cosmic context, uh, like th there are all these uh, cosmologies, cosmogonies relating that that in include the idea of nothingness, and I'm not really in the business of choosing one of them over the others, um, or even of like being really meticulous in uh like um cataloging them but um uh like here's a couple right so i mean there's the idea that the christian idea really the judeo-christian abrahamic idea that god created the world from nothing right that there was god who is everything and there wasn't a world yet and somehow there was also a nothingness um, and that nothingness was required and immediately that gets into this vagueness um, which is part of the whole point right so this vagueness where um, you might take God created the world from nothing to mean that he didn't need anything um, he just created the world there was no there was no material at all. There, there, were, there, there was nothing out of which he created the world. He just created the world. Um, but what it seems to also mean is that it was necessary, that that, that absence was somehow necessary, that, that, that there was some kind of hole, some kind of black hole that sort of had to be there um, and uh, an that, that, emptiness. And... This, this idea, I mean, this is just eternally fascinating, you know, like, um, like, does, does there need to be a nothingness? Like, 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 lo logic breaks down when you look at this question. Not just logic, but like, the distinction between uh, thought and reality kind of breaks down, because it's like, um, if there is such a thing as nothingness, like, if there is such a thing as nothingness, then it must be something, right? But then is that something a thing? Is it real? Um, uh, or is it a thing in the world or is it a thing in the mind? But if it's a thing in the mind, does that mean it's not real? Um, what if it's real in the mind? Um, but, then what is, but then what is the distinction between the world and the mind? when you're at such an abstract level. So there's just this kind of like flickering there. Um, and um, there's also a sort of effective tone. So it's a Christian dogma that God joyfully created the world out of nothingness. He didn't have to, um, but he, he just wanted to... Um, and um, that you know, it's very it's very important to Christians that that be upheld. Um, there's a much more widespread idea among people who are just sort of opining about this stuff, um, especially in Gnosticism, that the nothingness in question uh, was an affliction to God; that it was causing God to suffer. That, that it was something closer to that inner yearning um, and need to create maybe enough maybe a, a loneliness um, something like that um, that, that it was a problem to solve and um, uh, I, the, the the nuance so my my film origin of the alimonies which by the way is um, playing tonight in New York Maybe I'll upload this video today, actually, uh, just to promote it or whatever. Um, uh, that film is about that. Really, there's sort of two nothingnesses. There's like a, there's a lack of nothingness, which is the real nothing. Anyway, I won't get into all that. But 
Um, so yeah, so maybe God created the world out of nothing. Um, and then, but then even if you don't believe in God, then there's the question of scientific cosmology, um, which by no means excludes there being a God, but it also doesn't, maybe doesn't necessarily require a God where um, you know, the, the, the singularity towards which the um, standard model equation points, this infinitely hot and dense point in the past uh, that was sort of so hot and dense and small that, um, uh, you know, think there weren't things in the world, everything was super uniform, that like that, that point, you know, and it's right at that horizon where it's so small that um, that there needs to be both gravity and quantum physics operating, and we and there's no way to uh, we we don't know of any way to perform experiments in that kind of realm, and we don't really have a, the equations break down, right? So like. Um, I have no idea whether that's an eternal situation or uh, just a contingency and that that will be solved. If it's going to be solved, it seems like it might be solved too soon, probably, because everything seems to be being solved right now, um, technologically and scientifically. Um, but uh, anyway, that like maybe the beginning of the universe, uh, uh, emerged from this kind of infinite heat um, that was sort of neither, um, there was both everything and nothing. Uh, um, and, you know, p people organize these things in all these different ways without any real justification. You know, like if you're Kurzweil, uh, you imagine that the linear trajectory of human civilization is actually there's just a straight line you know from the primeval seed the so-called big bang through the expansion of the universe 20 million years you know five million years ago there's the earth and life and man then you know and now like that, that it's all a kind of dissipation of that same one infinite intensity um, I'm, I'm more inclined to a view that's a little more subtle, I think, which is that uh, maybe there is an overall metaphysical version of it um, that has instances in a lot of different realms. So there's, there's, a, there's a kind of, this is a metaphysical uh, structure, but it happens in the physical cosmos in one way, um, it happens in society in one way, um, it happens for any, like every human being is kind of its own little nothingness, its own little death drive um, that um, causes a manifestation in the same way and that um, and that different different disciplines all have this too. That there's a version in biology, you know, that they're just versions. Um, though, I mean, the, the the problem with that approach is that then it sort of leaves unexplained why there are all these different versions and why there are the versions that there are rather than other ones. Um, but in any case, last thing I'll say about the haptic void. Uh, so I guess I didn't really say the main point, which is just that like the haptic void is either a version of um, a cosmic death drive uh, or God's creation of the world. Um, or, and, and I, I tend to, well, I, I sort of said the other a second ago, but part of me tends to think of or want, wants to identify metal as um, really sort of in, in, integral, integral, uh, central to the end of history or the end of civilization or something where like um, the extremes that metal deals with 
uh, arise because of the, the, the eclipse of our current conception of humanity brought about by electricity and industry. And, um, and so, so that's actually really central that, you know, that that's not just a version of the haptic void. Um, you know, we're talking about the transcendence of the human spirit, you know, out of and beyond humanity. Um, and that there's some kind of like force or trajectory that metal has embodied, uh, since the sixties, um, that, yeah, is kind of a, a cosmic arrow pointing towards something new. And, um, so two aspects of the haptic void are one that it's, um, one is its betweenness and then one is its excess. So the haptic void is between sound and feeling. And this is something that, you know, um, metal is the archetype of this, like rock in general, you know, including, uh, trap music and a lot of pop involves this too, but metal is really about it. Um, where like there's a frequency range, you know, from about like 40 to like 400 or so Hertz where those sound waves you feel with your body uh, just as much as you f he he translate into pitch. And so it's like, it's between two senses. So there's this multidisciplinary quality to it. This is what sun, sun O, whatever, uh, makes use of so famously. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, that, that betweenness like you kind of have to like rock music to understand this, but like that 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 sense of feeling involved, um, uh, where you know, like if you listen to rock music and it's too quiet, there's almost no point. Uh, you you have to feel it as well as hear it. So it's between two senses. Um, but then also there's an excess, um, because it's like the, uh, it's very important for the volume to be high, at a decibel level you know, that's like a, it's, it's like at least at like 110, you know, some people play as loud as like 140, where like you are pushing the faculty of hearing to its limit. But like you, you, um, you're like kind of at risk of possibly damaging your hearing, um, you know, when you're listening to metal and it's, um, not just that, but it's like, it's, it's losing it's it's losing its normal functioning like you're um you know you don't really perceive like between 110 and 120 decibels like you're not really hearing that increase of pitch as like an event as a sonic event you're kind of feeling it in your ears and like um so that that excess and that betweenness um, and then the, uh, I make a lot of this in my text, um, that it's both satisfying and unsatisfying. You know, there's, there's this kind of thirst it's, and it's really not clear. It's like, whether is it being, there's this violence to it. There's this satisfaction, there's this dissatisfaction, but there's also this fullness. Um, and there's there's always a kind of artistry and, and, and beauty involved as well. It's very trans, transcendent and sublime. Um, and, and it's, and there's, yeah, and it has an eternal quality, even though it has instances that are temporal. Uh, for example, the history of metal, uh, the birth of metal, the history of metal, the birth of black metal, uh, the birth of punk, their their merger, um, and uh, and and the future of metal and the future of culture. So um, that's yeah. Those are some thoughts about the haptic void.